Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel Maxcotech. In this video, we are going to study about symmetric and asymmetric encryption. We are going to look at its logarithm on exactly how it works by giving you some interesting and real world examples. Then we will look at what are the limitations in symmetric key logarithm. Then we will look at how asymmetric key logarithm actually uh, comes into play and addresses the limitations of symmetric key logarithm. We will look at most common uh, asymmetric key uh, logarithm known as RSA. We look at how it's used in encryption as well as in digital signatures by giving you very interesting examples of minions. And then finally, we are going to look at how digital signature works. So let's get started. So when it comes to securing the internet, we are dealing with the threats that can physically harm an individual life, either directly or indirectly. The increased number of connected devices with unique IP addresses and their ability to push the data over the network can be a gate opener for hackers. In order to make the IoT network fully secure, we need to make sure that the device data, including the metadata, which includes device IP addresses and the port number of the source and destination, is end-to-end -end validated and encrypted. Let me introduce the very famous personalities of the computer science, Alice and Bob, who sign up for a simple chat service and say hello hi. It is important to know in the world of internet, the data packets that you send can be easily read by anyone, either intentionally or unintentionally. In order to secure the entire channel, they both need to encrypt the data packets with the secret key which they get from the server. Note that the hacker can still read the message, but he cannot understand because it is encrypted. The encrypted message is called ciphertext. This is called symmetric key algorithm, where the same key is used to encrypt the plain text as well as to decrypt the ciphertext. And the most popular algorithm among these is the AES, Advanced Encryption Standard. So guess what, we just solved the problem, right? Alice and Bob can securely communicate with each other. But I don't think so, because the question is, does the secret key get securely shared with Alice and Bob? The simple answer is no. That's because the channel is still unsecure, where a hacker is already waiting for the secret key, and as soon as it gets it, can read the message by decrypting the ciphertext. So Alice, Bob and the server have to meet physically at some place to exchange the secret key before starting the conversation. And by doing that, we are killing the purpose of internet. Which brings me to the conclusion that this logarithm can perfectly work if no sharing of keys is involved in the network. For example, there is a predefined number of clients, each having a fixed secret key hard-coded in their memory. But mostly this is not the case especially for distributed systems or web or IoT applications where we can expect many number of clients or IoT devices trying to sign in and sign out from the system. In that case, the newly connected client needs to know the secret key. So we started off to solve a problem and in doing so, we ended up in another problem. Which brings us to asymmetric key logarithm, where we have a key pair of each client, the private key and the public key. The private key, as the name says, is always kept private from everyone, even from the server as well. And the public key has to be globally published to be visible to everyone. So it is shared with everyone. The most popular asymmetric key logarithm is known as RSA. Both of these keys are mathematically generated in such a way that if a plain text is encrypted with the public key, it can only be decrypted by its own private key. And if a plain text is encrypted by its private key, it can only be decrypted by its own public key. So these two methods have their own use cases. The first one is used for encryption and the other one is used for digital signature. And most of the times these both are used together for extra security. We will be looking at each of them in the upcoming slides. Case one, encryption. If Alice wants to make sure that my message should only be readable by Bob, then Alice will encrypt the message with Bob's public key. Then no one else, including Alice, can read or decrypt this message except Bob, because the message was encrypted by Bob's public key and it can only be decrypted by Bob's private key. 
which is only stored with Bob. If someone else tries to decrypt the message with their own private key, they will read nothing except a garbage. Case 2. Digital Signature If the receiver wants to make sure that the received message is really from the real sender, which is called authentication, the message itself was not altered, which is called integrity, and the sender cannot deny to be the real sender of this message, non-repetition. To explain this, let me give you a very interesting example of minions, where a king wants to send a message to the soldiers attack at dawn. So the message includes from king and message attack at dawn. The king signs the message with its own private key, attaches the signature along with the message and sends it to the soldiers. So the soldiers team leader first reads each of the field of the message as attack at dawn and the from field is king. But now it needs to check was it really from king or someone else. So it is going to verify the signature by king's public key. If the signature is valid, then the soldier team leader has confirmed three things. The message was really from king and the message was not altered. And now the king cannot deny to be the real sender of this message. Now let us look at another situation where the king sends the same message along with the same signature to the soldiers. But this time the soldier receives attack at dusk and the from field is king. After verifying the signature by king's public key, turns out that the validity is incorrect and hence the soldier will not gonna receive this message. Well, what happened in between was that the message was not directly sent to the soldier and it looks like someone else altered the content of the message and kept the from field same. In this way, we have not fulfilled the integrity part because the message was altered and the signature will not be the same because the hacker's public key is different than the public key of king. So how the digital signature works? The sender signs the message and the receiver verifies the message. Now during signing, it creates the message and it generates the hash value of the message. It can be any hash logarithm, but it has to be the same in signing and verifying. So let's say we use SHA-256. Then we sign the message with the hash value and send the message along with the signature. On the other hand, the receiver generates the hash value of the message as it was done in the second part of the sender. Then it verifies the message with the hash value and the public key of the sender. And at last it compares the verified value against the received signature. If it matches then we have fulfilled all of the three conditions of the digital signature. That is all for this video. I hope it was informative for you guys. If it was, please don't forget to thumbs up, leave a comment and share your thoughts. And if you are new to this channel, please don't forget to subscribe. This is going to keep us motivated to bring such useful stuff to you guys in the future.